Pisces and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from January 18th to January 25th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind. So ready to jump in. But please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. They really do help the channel. They get us into all the algorithms. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. That's for you. So you will know when Pisces content is uploaded, which is every Thursday. Um, if you're feeling my vibe or you want to communicate with me in any way, it's all down in the description box. It's kind of linktastic down there. I do have uh, a square store that the Facebook and Instagram uh, marketplace uh, links back to. That's where you go to book the live Zoom call personal reads, the personal uh, pre-recorded personal readings where it'll look like this, but your question in a private link just to you. The energy reading where you get your transits, your natal chart, and uh, your destiny path number, and your life path number. It's also where you get the holy rollers. I'm happy to announce we're soon to release medicinal rollers. So uh, the holy rollers are for the ascension process. They're to help keep your chakras in alignment. The uh, medicinal sides will be for things like congestion or pain relief, things like that of that nature uh, on, the, on the, the medicinal side of things. Those are all on the square store, uh, the skin toner, the potpourri, a handful of stickers, all the square store. If you are looking to get personal readings at a regular basis on a discounted rate, that's the Patreon link. There's a, a variety of price ranges in there. It is a subscription, so that will come out every month. But you're entitled to at least one personal reading, a short personal reading, 15 minutes, uh, every month for the lowest of those tiers. And the more higher the dollar amount, the more readings you get, basically. So how that works. It gets down to like once a week instead of uh, once a month. So And then... The other is, uh, there's a link down there for uh, Gig Salad if you wanted to book me for an event, as well as a red link down there for Redbubble if you like this mat, or you want this picture on other products, or other pictures on this kind of product. Uh, you know, it's print to order, so whatever I've uploaded there, they will put on there. I do like to upload the nature uh, photography I take. I took this photo, so um, I'm... You know, everything that's up there is my own uh, design. I have, um, my in my MBA has an emphasis in marketing. So I'm familiar with marketing tools and I make my own designs. All right. Mechanical engineering. MBA with an emphasis in marketing. Tarot card reading. Ordained minister. A little bit of everything. Uh, Growing my own herbs now, too. The ones I'll, I'm making my own essential oils. I'm not just buying essential oils. My tablet is acting strangely. I apologize. It's causing a delay. It's okay. We'll start with the 19th. We have the Wax and Gibbous Moody Moon. Right here. Assessing our goals and figuring out what's working for us right now, what might need to change. Instead, fast Taurus. So we're thinking about it very practically. Messenger Mercury in Taskmaster Capricorn. And it, what it says to me is it's sort of like uh, you're trying to figure out how something will work. So think of it as like you might be moving the puzzle pieces around to see what fits together. That's what most of this energy for the beginning part of the energy is too. Messenger Mercury is in Taskmaster Capricorn and it's trying. That's favorable. 120 degree angle in the night sky. Expansive Jupiter in luxury loving Taurus. So this can indicate that uh, you're thinking very practically even about your own emotions. How do I feel about this being here or there? Well, talking out could be like in a therapy session, something like that. Talking out loud what those things might be. And probably even in a group setting that's expansive Jupiter and luxury loving Taurus is it could these ideas uh, could be something that bring you money, right? So it's a great uh, day for group discussions at work if you guys are in the process of trying to puzzle things through or anything, okay? Uh, you also, though, on this day have relationship-focused Venus, in dynamic Sagittarius, fun-loving Sagittarius, square, 90 degree angle in the night sky. It's not good. Neptune, your ruling dignitary in your sign of gentle Pisces. Yeah, because you guys are, are gentle souls. 
There's a lot of really positive energy in the air because that's great energy to be in. You're, you're like, if you think about what it is, like I personally, I'm, I'm a Taurus, so Taurus, Sun, Taurus, Moon, and almost all of my asteroids, like I get one Aries, one Virgo, and all the rest of them are, are all uh, Tauruses. So, you know, when my emotions are all over the place, I love to have a practical task to focus on. Right? Because you're just sitting there and then, and you don't have time to think about the emotions. You don't have time for your brain to spin because you have something that's actually useful that'll get you something to do. And it kind of like resets the brain for me. So I don't stay. Motion detected at front door. And there you go. So I don't stay in that sprinty brain mode. So to me, it's the most beautiful thing. It's the most beautiful thing, and it's like that. So then you got relationship focus Venus square you in gentle Pisces. You can see the big picture, and you can see the enthusiasm, and you might be feeling really compassionate. Compa your compassion game is top notch. You need to keep your boundaries, though. You can be gentle with people when you tell them no. Do it with respect. Be like, no, boo-boo, I cannot do that. No, no we're not going to talk to me that way. Okay? Yeah, we're going to talk to me with respect now. Okay? I don't talk to you like that. I don't know why you would want to talk to me this way. That kind of language. Gently. Gently correct. Because if you gently correct, it won't become a big drama fight, which you guys don't like anyway. So if you do it with gentleness, it'll actually get through to somebody on that particular day. On the 20th, that was. Okay. On the 22nd, we have the waxing gibbous moody moon, still assessing our goals. Now it's this emotional cancer. And it's opposite. That's not good. 180 degrees in the night sky. Relationship focused Venus and fun loving Sagittarius. Today is a great day to take a you day. You need a break. So you can process all those emotions that you haven't been dealing with. <laughs> so here's what happens. And I learned this from the, the hypnotherapy class. Which first and foremost teaches you how to communicate with your own subconscious. But for a Pisces, it's likely easier than it is for other people. Not everybody can talk to their own subconscious the same way. They don't always have the same access. Other people need assistance to get at it. Right? Just in case you didn't know that. Because sometimes our perception of reality, actually always our perception of reality is different than everybody else's. We just assume. And assuming makes an ass out of you and me, right? We assume that their perception and ours is the same. Don't ever think you know somebody's thoughts or feelings on a subject matter you haven't asked them about. That's a dangerous assumption. Okay, so what will happen is I liken it to you get, you get on an airplane, right? You get on an airplane and you get your carry-on luggage and you stow it in the uh, luggage compartment above, right? And you get in your seat and the plane takes off. That would be any normal day. Any normal day for work. Just any normal day of anything in your life. But then a trauma happens, right? This trauma that happens, it's like the plane is ready to crash. When the plane's in the process of crashing, you're not worrying about your emotions or your emotional baggage, as it is in this case, that is in that overhead compartment. You don't give a crap about that. You're thinking, I don't want to die. There's no time to worry about that stuff. You don't have time to worry about that stuff at all. And then when you, the plane lands, you're still not worried about that stuff. Although they warn you every single time when the plane lands one way or the other. Be careful with your, when you open, uh, you know, open up the overhead compartments, things might have shifted mid-flight. You might have developed coping mechanisms. You might have developed all kinds of nasty, bad habits. It could be any number of things. On the other hand, it could have, sh you know, shocked you into, you know, triggering some sort of healing and you actually have less baggage up there. You won't know until you open it up and go look, right? But in reality, what will happen at first it's after the emotional trauma of the plane almost crashing and you getting down. Mostly, they want to make sure the plane's not going to like explode or have something bad's going to happen. So they're just really trying to get you off the plane. And they're not necessarily thinking about the baggage overhead. They're not stopping to tell everybody to get the luggage. They got to unload all that anyway. It'll get unloaded. And you'll go over and get it. You'll have to collect your baggage. 
because they're not gonna make you suffer that. They don't wanna leave you standing there for hours next to the plane that almost went down. They don't need that reminder because they don't need the lawsuits. They're gonna try to whisk you away someplace nice and relaxing. Don't worry, we'll put you up in this place and yes, you know, all the things, right? They got a cover. So they'll get you your luggage. It'll be brought to you. You'll be able to get it from the luggage for the claim. Everybody will have it, right? Okay. It's much like that. Our conscious mind only controls a very small percentage of our day. Our conscious mind goes unconscious while we're asleep. Our conscious mind, we don't have to think breathe. We don't have to think swallow. We don't have to think, if we don't have to think any of those things. Those are all happening controlled by the computer processing back in the brain. What happens is your uh, subconscious mind decides you don't have the emotional capacity to deal with the trauma and the baggage that you develop from this trauma while you're going through it. You need to be in a place where you feel safe so you can decompress and let all those emotions out. If you don't get yourself into a place where you feel safe, you won't ever deal with the emotional baggage. And then you're just going to have a bunch of triggers and a bunch of problems where it'll keep you from getting much of anywhere in life. It's much more practical to deal with the emotional trauma right after it has happened so we can learn the lesson, anchor it in, and not repeat the mistake. On the 23rd. Relationship focused Venus decides to do the Seago Tango, joining Mercury and Mars in the signs of all things traditional Capricorn. Our passion projects take on a new practical focus. Whether it's love or goals, we are more conventional in our approach and more committed to Capricorn's love of commitments. You come back here. Bad tablet. Okay. So, on the 25th, we have a full moon. Which means the weekend uh, before, <laughs> you, you will have uh, four full moon readings available for you. <laughs> One, astrology, and three, oracle, as usual. It means also means you get ten full moons. Which is these are things you want to leave your life so like poverty pain sorrow you know whatever it is for you this full moon is in big-hearted Leo but it's square that's so not good 90 degree angle in the night sky expansive Jupiter in luxury loving Taurus we are close to achieving a goal. We are so close to achieving a goal that we might actually be getting antsy to be done. We need to find a way. Like we might want to celebrate the completion of a goal before we've actually completed it. And we can't let ourselves do that. You, know, you have to finish it and then you can celebrate. So find a way to bring the fun into the chore that is grinding out the last of that goal. So it doesn't seem like it's so far away. It's not as far away as we think it is. It's really going to start to move in a different direction now that that, that full moon is in place. So, Because that's what full moons do, bring things to culmination. So we're going to hit some major milestone right around there. Pisces, January 18th to the 25th. Apparently you can't do that without having an argument first though. Pisces, January 18th to the 25th. Pisces, January 18th. To the 25th. Pisces, January 18th. To the 25th. Pisces, January 18th. To the 25th, Pisces. January 18th to the 25th.
Okay. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I hope that this reading resonates with you. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I will clarify all these cards. Past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary, all these, summary. This is the general reading. Take what resonates, leave the rest. There is no gender in tarot. You are either walking up to someone and talking, or someone is walking up to you and talking. And this whole reading is a conversation between you and at least one other person. Some cards do mean groups. Like that one. Also on this channel, relationship is defined as a continued interaction between any two people. I'm going to describe the energy. You're going to place it on the person that sounds like, and then that's the relationship we are talking about. In your past there, hangman, that is your own energy. There was something you needed to get the bigger picture about. Transition so you can move into calmer waters. Uh, Knight of Serpents, any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, heavy on the Sagittarius, also a card of Scorpio. This person could have come at you with inconsistent energy. They could, Knight of Wands can be there for a good time, not a long time. Uh, Page of Cups, uh, that is a, an apology, it's a communication coming in. It could also have something to do with a child, perhaps a water sign child. Uh, Ace of Wands, that is any, um, that's a, a new opportunity. It could be a passionate opportunity, but that could be a passion project or it could be intimacy. It's up to you. Lover's card kind of doubles up on that, you know, intimacy side of it. But that's also Gemini energy and it's also a choice. So you could have a choice you have to make. That choice could have to do with intimacy, but it doesn't have to necessarily. It could just be about a passion project. King of Cups. Sunny Water Sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on that Scorpio. So this is Scorpio energy. That's Scorpio energy. It's also a card of Libra. It's like getting the Four of Cups. It's, it says promise. Well, it's clarified to find out for sure, but you could just not be interested in something. This is something that they're saying, or you could just see whatever this person is saying as potential, but nothing concrete. It might be talking in like the maybes and one days kind of terminology. So seven of wands. That's a, they, they say ability, but that's like also feeling defensive. I mean, you do have the upper ground in that card. The person who was uh, doing it they're they have the upper ground, but they were also caught unaware since they're wearing two different shoes. So, you know, you could have not been expecting this. Then it creates an argument, five of uh, wands. What you put out, you get back. So if you throw out heat and nastiness, they're going to, you know, throw that back at you. If you raise your voice, they will. How they are going to they're going to fight to you in response to how you fight to them with them. So the calmer you are, the calmer the situation will stay. 2 of cups, it's about a relationship. This is humor and there could be fun in this relationship, but remember this is a card really like a banger. So if if you bring fun in, you can get fun back, okay? But if you bring in confusion, you're going to get angry. So careful. There, there is a blocking energy here. This has got a chance to just go in a cycle, in a karmic cycle that just sort of spins with the increase. It's just it's not a good combination. What is this hangman in Pisces past? Compromise. Okay. What is this hangman in Pisces past? What is this hangman in Pisces past? Okay. All right, so you could have, uh... okay. all right, so you had an opportunity in your past that you needed to get a higher perspective on. You might have compromised with somebody, possibly a boss, possibly a father. This could be the father of your children. It could be father, you know, the. Um, you could be a father or it could be your father or a father figure, could be a married man, could be a boss. And I sigh because three swords and married man, 
with the ace of wands. That could, this could mean with a compromise. This could mean sleeping with a married man. Okay, but it doesn't have to be. It could just be outside interference. Could be even coming in in, in a work relationship. A new opportunity. <coughs> making you distracted at work, for instance. What is this transition card in Pisces past? It's a goal. All right, so you wanted to move into calmer waters. You were trying to. What's this transition card? What's this transition card? What's this transition card? Three of Cups. reconciliation you're trying to have this transition trying to move forward right uh, ten of wands you knew it was going to be hard work you might have gotten yourself overloaded with work and you could it could have led to some sort of uh, reconciliation maybe you uh, you started working with somebody you worked with before what's this Knight of Serpents in Capricorn. So I'm sorry. You could be dealing with a Capricorn. In Pisces past. Loneliness. What is this Knight of Serpents? What is this Knight of Serpents? What is this Knight of Serpents? Okay, so you have Scorpio energy. With the Death card. So this person could have come rushing in because they felt lonely and they didn't want to feel lonely anymore. This is a person that could have betrayed you in the past or this person's uh, actions with the rushing in or the bringing something to an end could feel like a betrayal to someone else. They could have been betrayed in their own life and that's why they were feeling lonely and they came rushing in towards you with this opportunity. What's this page of fishes? Yeah, that's like in the Knight of Wands again. So this, this communication is gonna come from this person. Cause you know, it's an explorer. It's travel, it's passion, it's the night it wants. What is this page of fishes? 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 Two of pentacles. Okay. So they could be coming in and, you know, and communicating with you, maybe even apologizing. Maybe they they juggled you. Maybe they blocked you, but it's a tower. Something they did created a tower. Or something you did created a tower with them. Whatever them whatever they're saying to you, whatever they might be apologizing to you for, it's gonna bring a tower. And or you blocking with this apology for whatever this behavior is could create a tower. With that four of pentacles. It's like down here. Okay. What is this Ace of Serpents in Pisces near future? Memory. Okay. So this is somebody you knew before, from before. This is like the old becomes news again. What's this Ace of Serpents in Pisces near future? What is this Ace of Serpents? Cancer Pisces energy with the moon, Aquarius energy with the star, King of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Taurus, also card of Aries. So, some opportunity, possibly from some previous employer, maybe from somebody that you knew before that was an element of destiny, is coming in that you didn't see coming. What is this lover's card? Schedule. Okay. 
What is this lover's card? What is this lover's card? What is this lover's card? Hermit. It's Virgo of Energy. All right. So somebody has poor time management and is choosing to have poor time management when interacting with another person. It's kind of like they don't actually care if they get back to you. No, they don't actually care. They'll get to you when they get to you kind of energy. And that's something that needs to be healed if you guys are going to choose to have some sort of commitment here. With that Three of Pentacles. Contract, document, paperwork, marriage. Commitment. Okay. What is this King of Fishes in Pisces future? They feel trapped by something. Okay. What is this King of Fishes in Pisces future? What is the King of Fishes in Pisces future? What is this King of Fishes in Pisces future? And they're going to want to argue. So, uh, King of Fishes. Any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on the Scorpio. Also a card of Libra. Some sort of trap. They feel trapped. They feel left out in the cold. They'd look up angel number 55. They want to argue. Also 44. I think that actually 555 five, five and 44. Or 444 four, four, because there's another 4 up there. Those are called synchronicities. Angel numbers when you see those. Make sure you look them up as angel numbers. Uh, somebody feels left out in the cold. They want to fight about it. Or there was a fight about it. And they want to bring something into balance could be Libra, heavy on that Libra energy. What's this promise in Pisces future? What's this promise? Promise of gain. What's this promise in Pisces future? What's this promise? What's this promise? Sun card, Leo energy. Okay, so you could find out something. That sun card could be something. It doesn't seem like it's going to be something that makes you happy because you have that seven of wands and the seven of wands is down here. It's going to create tension within this relationship. Within the potential of this relationship with whoever this is. feels left out in the cold and trapped, right? So you might say no to them. What is the seven, uh, well, what, yeah. What is this ability card in Pisces balance? I don't want to start changing them up. It just feels funny to do that. Withdrawal. What is this ability card? What is this ability card? What is this ability card? Okay. So, this feeling defensive is going to make you feel sad and you're going to withdraw. You're going to move away from Six of Swords, move into calmer waters. Uh, Knight of Wands, any fire sign. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Heavy on the Sagittarius, also a card of Scorpio. Could be with this player person who came in in the back in the past because they were lonely or you were. What's this five of wands in Pisces outcome? Walking right into a fight. Could be about money. As we saw that for a quick second. Retribution and friendship. What's this five? What's this retribution? What's this retribution in Pisces outcome? What's this retribution? Seven of Cups, Wheel of Fortune. So you're expecting, basically, you feel like there's some sort of confusion surrounding some sort of connection, some sort of friendship that you know, you've been very patient with. Seven of uh, Pentacles, you know, 
Two of Cups, patient with a relationship. But divine timing is at play for this fight. This fight is inevitable. You cannot stop it from happening. It's an element of the divine. The only thing you can do is learn the lesson from the argument. What is this freedom card from Pisces summary? This fight is to make you see. See, freedom from overload. This relationship is overwhelming you. What's this freedom card in Pisces? What's this freedom card? What's this freedom card? Oh, you just need one. What's this freedom card? Okay, yeah, eight of wands. You're going to have a lot of communication about this relationship, whatever it was, which is something you were basically waiting for. Because you feel like, you know, because that's the card of waiting, seven of pentacles. I would look up, you know, the angel number 77. Okay. So, especially with this and some of their 77. <laughs> so this is the hill you're willing to die on, even though you feel overloaded, you feel overwhelmed by the communications about a relationship that's a soulmate. This is a fight you were expecting. What's this humor card? Savings. There's an illusion around money. What's this humor card? What's this humor card? <laughs> There's some illusion around money. Between this King of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Scorpio. Also card of Libra, this Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Capricorn. Also card of Sagittarius. And this King of Swords, that is any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Aquarius, also a card of Capricorn. So double Capricorn energy, double Libra energy. There is some sort of confusion here that needs to be cut through. Could be around money. And this is where this fighting is coming from here. Because there's this confusion. And the confusion is the reason for the argument. What's this increase in Pisces summary? Real estate. Okay. What is this increase? What is this increase? <coughs> what is this increase? Okay. Queen of Wands is your energy. Any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, heavy on the Aries, also a card of Libra and Pisces. It's you. Gemini, Virgo energy with the magician. You're manifesting something. The Queen of Wands is a manifester. You're manifesting some sort of car, vehicle, motion, movement, forward, possibly a, a property. Maybe a, a, a bigger house, a bigger car, maybe a house, maybe a you know, bigger apartment, you know, whatever it is. You're manifesting something, something bigger, but there might be some blockages here. And those blockages have to do <coughs> what if, with whatever this conflict is here, this confusion energy, because of the overload, because of a, a relationship here. There's confusion around money. So, I would, at this time, unless you're part of a, you know, unless you're married, and not pseudo married, actual married. Actual married where you guys have agreed something about shared finances up front. Okay? Because marriage has that shared finances thing. Your money is your money and their money is their money. And neither one of you should be paying the other people's bills until you're married. Even if you live together, you just divide up the, you know, you pay this bill, I'll pay that bill. And then you move along. Okay? Don't. Don't be doing joint bank accounts and don't be handing over your money to anybody and don't be have, trying to have anybody hand over their money to you. 
must be my first advice. This is the Sacred Geometry Oracle. It's advice I follow myself, by the way. This is the Sacred Geometry Oracle. I'm going to pull one card, and I'm going to be focusing on what it is Pisces need to focus on this week, and then I'll get you more advice. What does Pisces need to be focused on for January 18th to January 25th? Gaia. Okay, so Mother Earth. The frequency of Gaia reminds us that we are infinitely connected to one another just as we are to our Gaia or to our Great Mother and to the universe that birthed us all. Yeah, we are all interconnected to absolutely everything, every object, every person, everywhere around us. Everywhere in the world, everybody's ever lived, everybody's ever died. All of heaven, all of hell, all of earth, all of everything. Every single moment of every single second for all of existence. All at the same moment. So you can sit with that for a moment. And thanks for Pisces. All right. How many cards was that? Hold on. Was four. I'm not sure where to take that. Four swords, page of wands, chariots, star card. Okay, so this increase, this goal, this this that you're trying to do. There is an element of wish fulfillment, and there is an element of the divine here. Uh, you are going to get a communication about this, and it could be from somebody you haven't heard from in a while. That's your advice. And they're not telling you necessarily to take uh, the advice of whoever this is, but you're going to get a communication about it. And that might be what helps you uh, move forward. The fight might need to happen so for something to shake loose for there to be forward motion. It's kind of like a spirit saying, well, if I didn't make you uncomfortable, you wouldn't move. If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. I'm going to pull three cards. It's your opportunity to pause the video to think of one to three yes or no questions you would like answered. Message for Pisces. Peaceful resolution. Message for Pisces. Don't stop. Message for Pisces. No. So yes, yes, no. <laughs> Emphatically no. I don't know what that one is. But don't worry about this argument because it will come to a peaceful resolution. So there's that. Let's give you some advice. Advice for Pisces, January 18th through the 25th. Don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. That's the end of the reading. Advice for Pisces, January 18th through the 25th. It's time to release negativity. Full moon in Scorpio. Advice for Pisces. January 18th through the 25th. A new start is coming. New moon. Mm -hmm. Which you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. That's the February new moon. So it is It is indeed coming. You won't have to wait too long. It's just a couple of weeks between this and that. Emotions are running high, super moon. They certainly are. There's a lot of uh, five of wands going around in these readings this week. Confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. Look, you're coming to an end of a cycle. Look at that. You're closing out something. And, and conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. That happened in October. So. Because it was a Scorpio sun and a Taurus full moon eclipse. Pesky Tauruses coming in, jacking up your world. And they are, they are. I like to tell you when stuff's coming and about to smack you upside the head because that's mostly what these are. Um, yeah, end of cycle. Get ready. Get ready because the things you're trying to, uh, to manifest are getting ready. They're ready, Pisces. They're on the edge there. It's all potential energy, so make sure you maintain your focus to get what you want. Don't lose your focus now. 
<clears throat> and don't try to change your goals at this point. Whatever goals you set up, you know, put in place back in this, this time frame, when you were going through these eclipses and you started having ideas, you need to maintain those goals because those are the ones you've built on. Don't give up part way through. Push through. Message for Pisces. Things are not always just going to come easy. And that's what I would say is the primary thing that I've noted about, noticed about Pisces. When things don't go completely smooth and they're not totally easy right away, there's a tendency to give up instead of change tactics. you got to change tactics. Between the worlds. We work in the in-between times. At dawn and dusk. Under the stars at midsummer and midwinter, weaving flower into frost and frost into magic. Join us there and you will feel the fairy wisdom light up within you. See, the work doesn't actually ever stop, Pisces. Not in the in-between worlds, not in the energy world. You can't give up part way through. Whatever this is, you got this. I hope that helps, Pisces, because it's what I have for you. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. And you have the right to be here.